Good evening and welcome to Sudbury Baptist Church Watch Night Service. This is the last service of 2021. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to meet together in the church, so all of this uh, service is online. In spite of that, we're going to pray for God to be with us in this time as we say goodbye to 2021 and we say hello to 2022. The Watch Night service is traditionally a time when we reflect on what's happened and where we ask for God's grace and God's strength to move forward. Uh, it's been a, another difficult year uh, with COVID, lots of uh, things have happened. You don't need me to tell you. Uh, we've, been, we've all been caught up in this and it's been a, a worldwide, a global phenomenon. But we are going to come to God and uh, put our trust, renew our trust in him. You know, the Bible is full of passages uh, that speak about times when things are difficult, when there is a shaking going on. And I wanted to begin this watch night service by reading Psalm 46. This is what it says. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. As the psalmist uh, looked at the world around him, he saw that everything was in uproar. There was a real shaking going on. And yet he was able to say, God is with us. And that's the difference that faith makes, that we are not left to navigate the stormy times on our own, but our God has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. And as I read that verse 10, be still and know that I'm God. I'm reminded of the words of Jesus when he's with his disciples on the boat and they said to him, Lord, don't you care and we're going to drown. And he spoke to the wind and the waves and everything was calm. And that's what we need to hear, don't we? The voice of Jesus speaking to us. We're going to sing in a moment a song that reminds us that God is in control. But before we do that, let's let's pray, shall we? Father, we come to you on this last service of 2021. And Lord, once again, it's been a, a difficult year. Lord, there's been challenges that we faced. And Lord, we come to face an uncertain future. But Lord, we thank you that you are in control. You are with us. You are the one who calms the storm. Who says, be still and know that I am God. We want to pray, Lord, as we, as we listen to these words tonight, as we sing together, that we might grow in confidence that you are indeed with us, that you are in control of our lives and you are in control of our world. Lord Jesus, we come to worship you. Bring us your peace. 
there are storms in our own hearts. Bring us peace, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
So he sung about God still being in control. Sometimes we feel that our lives themselves are out of control, not because of circumstances, things around us, but because of what's going on inside us. Sometimes we're all too aware that our lives are not following closely enough to Jesus. And the Watch Night service is a time when we can come and we can confess our sins. We might look back on 2021 and regret some of the choices that we've made. We might see things that we, we could have done differently and we, and we might think, why, why did I do that? Why did I go that way at that time? Why did I choose that? But God is a God of new beginnings. And, you know, you can go into 2022 with a clear conscience, with your sins forgiven and with a, a new resolve to follow him more fully. Let's just have a few moments, shall we, of quietness, of confession, bringing our failures, bringing our regrets to him. And then we're going to sing another song of worship that invites us just to come into the presence of Jesus and find that forgiveness.
as 2021 is drawing to a close, my thoughts are as follows. Where would I be without Jesus Christ as my source? May I always stick to his words in spirit and truth and pray that goes for you too. I will close with this verse, this verse, Psalms 139 verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I wish you all a blessed 2022. Well, as I've been saying, uh, the Watch Night service is a time to reflect, to look back on the past year and also to uh, look forward and uh, to pray for God's strength, for God to be with us in the year ahead. Um, so it's a time to reflect. It, it's interesting. I was looking back on what I said at this time last year and uh, I'll just read out what I've got in my notes and I said this is the last service of 2020 and it's a year that we will be glad to say goodbye to. It all started out very differently. Boris and the Conservative Party had won a resounding victory in December 2019 and looked unstoppable. All the talk was of Brexit the government announced uh, their ambitious programme for change. But suddenly, it all came to a grinding halt. Talk of Brexit gave way to talk of COVID and our lives changed dramatically. And I said uh, last December, uh, this has been a year like no other. It was estimated that about 72,000 people died from COVID in uh, 2020. So that was a year ago and you might wonder well what's changed? Once again as we look back we're looking at a year where Covid has dominated our news. Sadly there has been a similar number of deaths. Uh, thankfully in the second half of this year the number has dropped dramatically and we do thank God for scientists who've been able to produce vaccines that have helped uh, to some extent, although as we know, uh, it's not a 100% solution. A month or so ago, it did indeed look as if COVID might be on the way out. But once again, we're in the midst of a surge due to the Omicron variant, numbers of people getting COVID rising again. So all this, is a reminder to us of the fragility of life. I think these last couple of years have really shaken a lot of people's confidence, has brought a lot of fear and anxiety uh, into people's lives. But as Christians, how, how do we respond? What difference does it make being a Christian in these times? Well, first of all, I want to say that as Christians, we are people who live in hope. We live with hope. Hope is such a, a precious thing. You can cope with the most extraordinary setbacks and difficulties and struggles if you have hope. But if you lose hope, um, things uh, feel so bleak. Uh, people can despair. But as Christians, we are people who have hope. And I wanted to read out some words that Paul shared uh, in the book of Romans, which I think are uh, verses which can speak to us today over the last year or so. I think I've shared some of these a few times. This is what Paul says. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subject to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. There's that word, hope. The world 
is suffering. The world is groaning. Um, but there is the hope that one day the creation itself will be set free. So this world is fallen. It's not a perfect world. Uh, people sometimes sort of say, well, what, what's going on? What's happening? Why is all this happening? Well, as Christians, we believe it's because the world is fallen, because Adam and Eve stepped out of line in the garden and they plunged us into uh, this cycle. But one day, it will be transformed. And whatever people worry about today, whatever you and I worry about today, whether it's COVID, whether it's crime, whether it's global warming, whatever it is, will one day come to an end when God steps fully into the situation and the world is transformed. Does that mean, if we're Christians and we're in this world and we have hope, that we are immune from all the suffering? Does it mean that we don't care about it? Well, no, Paul goes on to talk about how we also share in that struggle. Paul says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. The hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But we hope for what we do not yet have. We wait for it patiently. There's so much in that passage that can help us. The creation is groaning. But not only the creation, but we ourselves. And not just us as part of uh, humanity, but those who have the first fruits of the Spirit. So what it's saying here is that as a Christian, we groan too. We share in the suffering of the world around us. And we long for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. In the uh, couple of weeks uh, before Christmas, um, I was certainly groaning. I, uh, I got a cold. Uh, then I lost my voice for about four days, um, just got through the sermon on, a, on a, one of the Sundays and then my voice went. I meant that it was very peaceful for my family at home. Um, but, uh, and then um, I caught a terrible stomach bug and was in agony. Um, and I was thinking, I'm really groaning and I'm looking forward to that day uh, when I get a new body in the new creation uh, and I no longer have to share in that groaning um, but it's not just physical groaning, it's, it's spiritual groaning. As we look at what's gone on in the world, as we uh, look at some of the things that are happening and we, and we struggle on an emotional level, on an intellectual level, on a spiritual level, we groan inwardly. But we still have hope. Having spoken about groaning, he says, we hope. There's that word again. It's a, it's a wonderful word. So what's Paul said so far? The world is fallen. And we are fallen. We groan. But God is with us. And Paul goes on to say, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. You know, sometimes as you look at what's happening in the world, as you look at some of the experiences you're going through, sometimes you can't find the words to pray. It's too painful. And sometimes all you can do 
is cry out to God in your pain. And what Paul tells us here is that when we do that, when we cry out to God, that the Holy Spirit takes our groans and he understands what we're really trying to say and he brings those groans as prayers, as intercessions to our Father in heaven who loves us. So never think it's not worth praying. You know, if you're at your wit's end, if you don't really know what to pray, if you kind of feel, well, it's all too much, bring those prayers, bring those groanings to God because God sees your heart. He knows what you're going through and he understands and he's a father who loves you. So the creation's groaning. We are groaning. The Holy Spirit takes our groans, brings them into the presence of God and God sees our hearts. God knows what's really happening. And then Paul brings some really good news, which I wonder what sounds quite surprising. You see, many people think that being a Christian should mean that God will insulate you from all the pain and suffering of the world. But that isn't what he says. He says something very different and something more profound. Listen to what he says in some very familiar verses, verse 28 of Romans. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. So think about that for a moment. God doesn't promise to insulate us from the groans of the world, from the suffering of creation, but he promises to be with us in the midst of those things and to use those things for good. God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for my life. And that overall plan, not the details, but the overall plan is to make us like Jesus. And what Paul is saying is, look, you need to see that when you're going through things, and he certainly went through an awful lot of things for his faith in Jesus. When you're going through difficulties, trials and tribulations and persecution and suffering and heartache and disappointment, when you're going through all of that, recognize that God can use all of those things to change you and to transform you and to make you a bit more in the image of his son Jesus. Wow. It's a hard one, isn't it, to really uh, get your mind around. And yet the reality is that these things do make us stronger in our faith, or they can make us stronger in our faith. If we face them, if we endure through them, we can be changed a bit more into the likeness of Jesus. So what's the overall kind of message of this passage then? Well, what it means is that we can face the next year, 2022, with certainty. Not because we know what's going to happen. Because nobody does. I don't know. You don't know. Government scientists medical scientists making predictions about the course of, the, of COVID. They don't know. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But we believe in a God who does know and who's promised he will be with us in the midst of all of those things. And he's promised that if we bring our burdens and our concerns and our prayers to him, that he will carry us through and that we can end next year 
I mean, he made a bit more like Jesus. He is always at work in our life because there's always more work to be done. So we face a new year and God is with us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we look back on this last year, it's been a really difficult time in so many ways. There's been so many struggles. There's been so many fears, so many anxieties. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us have been through times of sickness, and fear and anxiety, and we, we haven't known what's gonna happen. And Lord, as we look at the future, once again, we, we don't know what's around the corner. But we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you see the end from the beginning. You know exactly what's going to happen in the next 12 months. And Lord, you're with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. That's just such a wonderful thing to hold on to, Lord. And we thank you that when we cry out to you in our pain and our suffering, when we groan, that you know what's going on inside us. And we thank you, Lord God, for that incredible promise that you can work all things for good. Lord, we don't always see how things can be for good but Lord that is what you have promised and the supreme good of course is that you're making us like Jesus we thank you for Jesus who too went through pain and suffering he knew groaning in the garden of Gethsemane who cried out God if it's possible take this from me but through his suffering and death brought salvation for us. Lord Jesus, we worship you. We want to be like you. Help us, Lord Jesus, to trust you in this year ahead. Amen.
Thank you.